uh, snacks and beverages and continue the conversation. So, our next speakers, I would like to welcome to the podium, Jeff Mendoza and Stephen August. Oh, well, Stephen, the man of mystery, was not able to join us. So we have uh, Naveen Srinivasan here speaking on behalf of uh, our friend Stephen. Jeff is an engineer at Google's open source security team. He's focused on supply chain security and securing Google's GitHub repositories. I will let Naveen introduce himself because Stephen didn't give us a bio either. So please, Jeff and Naveen, take it away. We would love to hear more. Test, test, all right. Thank you from everyone for joining, um, and thanks for the introductions, Krobe. Uh, today we're gonna talk about automated trust techniques for measuring trustworthiness of open source code and communities, and that's a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> and um, so I'm gonna start it off, and then Naveen's gonna cover some bit, and then we'll, we'll switch back to me. Um, Naveen, why don't you go ahead and introduce yeah. yourself. Hi, um, obviously, like what Crow and Jeff mentioned, I'm not Stephen, I'm taking over for Stephen's, because Stephen couldn't make it, uh, because of flight delays. Um, I'm gonna try my best to cover up for things, and uh, <laughs> this is next in these last hour I prepared for this talk. Uh, that's, that's a quick about update of what it is. Uh, I'm Naveen Srinivasan. I'm one of the maintainers of the Scorecard Security Project, um, and I work for Endo Labs, which is a supply chain security startup. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Yeah, and one of the benefits of having your, your co conference in your hotel is you can get here really, really quickly in the morning, but you can also go to your room after lunch for a nap. So thank you, everyone, for not doing that and, <laughs> and coming here, because I could use a nap right now. <laughs> um, so before we talk about automated um, ways to judge security and, and trustworthiness, trustworthiness uh, we should talk about the previous techniques, or before automation. Uh, and that is the OpenSSF Best Practices Badge. Woo! <laughs> so um, this was a, kind of a precursor to some of the automated tools that were developed to, to judge trustworthiness. Um, and it was formerly known as CII Best Practices Badge. It, I think it predates OpenSSF. So it has, and since it's not an automated tool, it's not something you run, it's, a, it's text. You go and you look and you see what what are the requirements to meet these best practices? And it's a lot of text, and it's really, really great. It's a really great resource for, you know, an, an authoritative place where you can say the, these are the practices that we recommend. This is something that is secure, and you can go and see what you need to do to, to meet those requirements. Uh, and then, if you attest to meet them, then you get the badge. Uh, and one, another thing about the badge is it has full coverage because it's not limited by things that can be automated. Um, and as you'll see with the automation techniques later, of course there are limitations to what you can build inside of a, um, inside of a tool. Um, so getting onto the first tool, we're gonna to talk about Scorecard. And Naveen, as the, uh, as the maintainer of Scorecard, he's gonna go over that. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Um, Scorecard is an open SSF project, um, um, and um, it's an automated tool to help analyze most of the security issues that, that are uh, that an open source project could have. Scorecard is developed by, within the OpenSSF with cross industry um, organizations like GitHub, Google, IBM, and uh, all these organizations. Um, there, are, there are multiple maintainers. I'm one of the maintainers among that. What does Scorecard do, tries to do? Um, Scorecard tries to identify the good practices as well as the bad practices. Um, scorecard attempts to detect if the good practices are followed. Example, do projects do continuous testing, fuzzing? Um, why is this critical? Because that reduces the number of bugs in the source code. Um, the next thing is it looks for, does it do, do projects update their dependencies? Um, is it imp it's important so that you patch your vulnerabilities. Does it have safe configuration settings, something like Code protection, um, which, which we will, I will be doing another talk tomorrow, which we will demonstrate how that can, how that, if you don't have that setting enabled, how malicious developers can push source code into that. It also looks at web configuration settings, like um, is it authenticated? 
like I mentioned, not just good practices, even bad practices. Um, things like, do you have a bus factor of one wherein is it maintained by only one developer? If it is, then there's a higher risk of if that one developer, ha <laughs> something happens to him, then who's going to maintain that project? Looks for uh, your secrets accessible to pull requests. I'll demonstrate uh, as it goes on the talk of why it can be a problem. Um, it also looks at how the attacker can circumvent your permissions and bypass code reviews, things like that. That are, that are primarily, what are the use cases of using scorecard? You can do it for your own projects as well as for your dependencies. Improve, improve the security practice of your own project as well as your dependencies. It can, it can, it can identify if your dependencies are being maintained, are there any vulnerabilities in your project and your dependencies? Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip that. I want to go to this specifically because um, how do you install Scorecard? How do you run Scorecard? Um, the easiest way to run Scorecard is um, using Docker Run. That's the easiest way. Um, to run this, one of the critical things that you need is a GitHub token because Scorecard primarily utilizes GitHub token to use the GitHub APIs, that's, that's something you need that. And using this, um, there's, a, there's a Docker container to run that, and you point it to a repository, it runs all the default, all the checks that needs to run. When it runs, what does it come back with? It comes back with certain warnings, um, the good and the bad, like, like I mentioned. It's gonna come back and say, what are the things that it could, it could identify as not, not um, not working. Like in this example, it's going to indicate a project exposes secret to pull requests. The next one is how somebody, how an attacker can change the um, permissions of the workflow. That's critical, especially on the supply chain security, because if somebody can change your permission, that means they can they can take over your um, take over your code. And then this last one, how, how your dependencies are not being pinned, pinned with hash so that somebody, so that what you depend on can be changed and that could cause problems and which I will be demonstrating in the, I, I apologize, not today, but in tomorrow's talk. Now coming back to how is scorecard being utilized? If you're using any Go project, the official package.dev.go.dev now provides a link to every project as to how, what is the score of each one of these things, uh, which, is, which, is, uh, which, is, which provides a link. Another classic example is depths.dev. Depths.dev, people who don't know, depths.dev essentially takes all your dependencies um, and showcases what the, on any project, what are the dependencies and what others depend on you. Based on that, and also along with that, the depths of dev also utilize shows scorecard scores for each one of your, each one of those projects and how they, how they stand, where they stand on each one of these checks. And what you see on the right side is all the checks of scorecards, checks. you can utilize scorecard for your own projects. I show, uh, just now I showed prior to this how to utilize scorecard using CLI. Scorecard also has an action, a GitHub action that you can install and it'll run for your project, your GitHub project and figure out what are the, what are the best practices, what, what are the things that are failing on. The action runs on two, two, two different settings, one is a cron job that keeps running um, every, uh, on a cron. Another one is whenever there's a push to your repository. And all the results are stored within your GitHub um, code scanning. So essentially, you'd be able to go look at what is the state of each one of these things. Here's an example of how these results would be shown. It's not, it's not shown to every, every one of the, it's only shown to the, 
contributors and the administrators, or what are things that are going wrong. The example, these are the, these are the ways it critically shows critical, high, low vulnerabilities in any one of these things. Um, that's about it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, we've learned the automated techniques to judge the security posture of other projects. Um, and so I hope you, you know, wouldn't want to use those for your dependencies that you're using or dependencies that you may be evaluating to, to bring into your project and depend on them. And then we've learned how to run scorecard on your own projects, because if you want other people to use your project, you want to have a good score. Um, but now you might be thinking, now how do I take these best practices and high security uh, posture and apply it to my projects um, at scale? and across um, and with enforcement or with, with continuous checking. So that's where we bring in to All-Star. So if Scorecard gives you a good score, uh, you can use All-Star to make, your, make yourself an All-Star of, of your Scorecard score. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll go over, what is All-Star? So it is a GitHub app that continuously checks for your, those security best practices on all of your repositories, as many as you install it on. Um, it can raise alerts like GitHub issues, or it can actually just fix those settings that are, if they are settings on your GitHub repositories, uh, it, based on what you decide. So again, you decide what policies to enable. Um, and it also extends a little bit past Scorecard where, um, where Scorecard is a tool that is objective. Um, the best practices come down from the, our best, best practices working group of OpenSSF. Um, All-Star is a little bit more tweakable where you can decide for yourself what do I want to enforce on my own GitHub repositories and set those settings up uh, at, with your own configuration. Uh, so again here, you know, it's in GitHub app, you go, how do I use it? You go, you click install and you install it on your, your organizations. Um, it has access to read the contents and settings of all your, your uh, repositories, creates issues, Again, set settings uh, if there's anything that needs to be configured, and it can actually, um, you can use it not just on public, but on private GitHub repositories as well. So um, here's, the configuration is all YAML files that go in a special GitHub repo in your organization, um, and you can turn on and off, again, all of those best practices. The, these are all really analogous to the, the scorecard checks that we saw that Naveen covered. You can turn all those on and off, and um, decide what you want the enforcement action to be, uh, and then you know, which repos you want to be, uh, be enforced as well. So um, just to give you an example, um, Anne earlier today covered you know, your security MD, how you should have a security policy. Uh, Skull, um, All Star and Scorecard can check for that, but you may only want to do that on your public repositories because your private repositories don't need that. So you can, you can configure the All Star settings to only alert on um, for each policy, like which type of repository you want it to check. Uh, and again, here are some of those example policies. Uh, a big one right now is branch protection. So GitHub has quite good settings for um, letting you uh, enforce that on certain branches, only commits go in through pull requests with certain reviews. And um, it's, we want to apply that at scale on all of our repositories, so All Star can put that on for whatever settings you pick, uh, and then make sure that it stays on. Uh, when you, for, the, for the policies that don't have um, a setting that we can just go and set and fix for you, these are the alerts that it raises currently. So if you have, um, again, a thousand GitHub repositories and you have owners of each one, you can uh, give each, each repository owner an alert via a GitHub issue that they need to go and fix something like uh, remove a binary artifact or set up a security MD. Um, and that's just a real quick overview of All Star. Um, just to wrap up, uh, both projects here in the OpenSSF, PRs welcome, but if actually, that's kind of a joke, you know, just join the, join the community, uh, join us uh, on GitHub, create, us, create issues, uh, we're on Slack, OpenSSF Slack, and mailing lists, and um, we have our biweekly meeting. Uh, any questions? Yes. So, open source is not only a GitHub. Do you have plans for GitLab, Red Club, or 
Yeah. So scorecard, uh, oh yeah, I'll repeat the question. So the question was, um, what about places that you host your repositories that are not GitHub? Uh, scorecard works on Git repositories. Uh, it, checks, it checks all of its settings there, but the, the, a few of the settings that scorecard checks are um, GitHub specific. And then All Star right now is a GitHub app. Um, so all of the code is, is connected to GitHub, but the, um, the project is, the, the intention of the project is to be policy based and for all these settings. So if that could be applied to GitLab or any, anywhere else that has like branch protection settings or other settings that need to be, um, need to be checked, that would make sense for the project as well. Uh, it's, it's not for me, but it's, uh, again, part of the project, so if anybody wants to work with me, I want to work with them. Do what? How does anybody contact you or Brian? Yeah, yeah, talk to me afterwards, and um, Brian. Brian is also working on this. It's working on helping these projects get to other Git environments. Brian is out helping take their boss. Adding to that specifically, um, Scorecard has a setting that you can run on local Git repositories, but it's not going to cover all the checks, but it covers certain checks. Scorecard has a you can utilize to run on local repositories that like what Jeff mentioned. All right. Well thanks yes. everybody. No, oh, there's a more. question. Uh, so like you're, you're talking about the, the alerts and you want to stop the alerts? Yeah, so th the config is um, set up where either the organization owner can be the gatekeeper and allow things to be turned on or off or, or accepted, or the, organiza the organization owner can allow the, individual, the repo itself to opt itself out um, by setting a file in its own repo. So it's, uh, it's flexible based on how the um, person installing AllStar on the org can you know, decides what they want to allow or disallow. Question? Yeah, so uh, when you're running it against a local repository, the scorecard, mm -hmm. um, is, uh, does it still need a GitHub auth token? No, it does not need one. Okay. It does not need one. No, Obviously, no. right, that's the whole idea. So you don't need to, you can, you can run it on, you don't, you don't need that. Completely local, you don't need that. Yep, you don't need to, you don't even need yeah, you don't, it does not go, it does all the checks locally, so it does not need any GitHub token. Cool. David? It, it's more of a comment. <laughs> yeah, we have contact some GitLab folks, um, yeah. uh, and, and we have made some efforts specifically to make the checks not require GitHub specifically. Okay, yes. Could you repeat? Um, uh, we, the scorecard, um, has contacted GitLab, and we are working on efforts to not be specific to GitHub. Did I, did I say that correctly? Okay, just want to make sure of that. Any other questions, comments? Okay. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.